The Elephant Man is a 1980 film directed by David Lynch. John Merrick, based on the real-life Joseph Merrick, is a deformed man who works as an attraction at a carnival. A surgeon, Dr. Frederick Treves, meets with Mr. Bites, the proprietor of the freak show. He allows Treves to bring Merrick to a hospital to study him and later to keep him safe. The hospital staff is initially afraid, but Treves proves that Merrick is intelligent and harmless. He is allowed to stay. Local newspapers, socialites, and even royalty are fascinated by him, though in some cases more as an oddity than as a human being. Merrick begins to take guests to his room. Some are kind to him like a famous actress, and some humor him and even fear him. Bites kidnaps Merrick and returns him to the carnival, but the Elephant Man is clearly sick and cannot perform the way he once did. He escapes to the hospital, receives some treatment, but it is clear that he will eventually die of a pulmonary disease. Merrick tells Treves that his life is now complete because he is loved. After a night at the theater, Merrick goes to sleep on his back, knowing this will surely kill him, and passes away in the night. Merrick's condition is not expressly confirmed by the doctors, but the film gives an almost supernatural origin. That Merrick's mother was killed by an elephant while she was pregnant with John, and this resulted in his beast-like appearance. No, Mr. Merrick, no, no. No son as loving as you could ever be a disappointment. Over the course of the film, we begin to question the morality of all those involved with the treatment of Merrick. Mrs. Mothershead believes that Merrick does not belong in the hospital, a declaration that Treves finds unacceptable. Later, when Mrs. Mothershead is excoriated by Treves, she says that only she truly takes care of him, bathes him, feeds him, watches over him, and that it is Treves who is mistreating Merrick by allowing high society types to come in and gawk at Merrick under the pretense of being polite to him. Treves begins to question himself, wondering if he is no different from Bites. Treves asks himself why he rescued Merrick and whether or not his intentions were altruistic. We see a lot of these reversals over the course of the film. In one scene, a man calls Merrick an abomination and an animal hoping to rouse the rest of the hospital to vote to throw Merrick out on the street. A few minutes later, after a visit from royalty, he votes to allow Merrick to stay on a permanent basis. Is there a difference between the mob that intrudes on Merrick's hospital room to gawk at him, and the high society couple who arrange to meet with him to do the same thing? Their more convenient access to Merrick differentiates the superficiality of the meetings, but the moral implications of treating Merrick as a sideshow attraction remains the same. Alienation is a key theme in The Elephant Man. During the first half hour or so of the film, the titular character is introduced to us and we follow his journey, but we know nothing about him. He is mute to us, he is often covered up. His face obscured, his past is unknown. This is alienation. We, the audience, are alienated from him, as he is alienated from humanity. There is a lot of talk about machinery and shots of the industrialized world in the film. Industrialization is sometimes cited as the cause of alienation of the modern man. In the middle of the film, Merrick is introduced to the works of William Shakespeare, specifically Romeo and Juliet, and yet his ponderings about the nature of humanity more resemble Hamlet. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast, no more. In The Elephant Man, we are confronted with these questions. We are to judge the difference between human being and an animal, or even how we treat an animal and how we treat a human being. Merrick is confronted with these questions as well, and his findings are complex and even paradoxical. Impossible to reconcile arguments about the human soul aside, the most obvious biological difference between the human animal and the non-human animal is greater intelligence. But of course, one could argue that the level of intelligence of something is not morally relevant to how one should treat someone or something. The opposing argument is that only humans are capable of making complex moral decisions, and therefore should be the only beneficiaries of morality which might be fallacious arguing. People do not treat others with kindness or at least politeness out of regard for intelligence, but out of empathy or regard for emotional well-being. For example, we do not employ an intelligence-based caste system in our daily human interactions, but the film does apparently use the concept of reason as the primary dissimilarity between human and animal. 
as well as why Merrick himself decrees that he should be treated better than he is, because in the most famous line of the film, he claims he is not an animal. The concept of reason flows throughout the film. Early on in the film, Treves is concerned about the dangers of industrial machines while performing surgery on someone who suffered a serious accident because of one. Treves says that machines are abominations because they cannot be reasoned with. They are mindless. Throughout the film, the narrative scenes are interspersed with these images of the industrial world, smoke mostly. It is reason, the film asserts, that makes someone a human being and not a machine, not an animal. Merrick's ability to remember and recite the 23rd Psalm in the Holy Bible convinces the skeptical governor of the hospital to allow him to stay. It is not a decision based upon compassion for the suffering of Merrick. He already knows that Merrick is suffering, but once the Elephant Man proves his intelligence, he suddenly becomes worthy of compassion and a home, which is troubling. The standards that the skeptic uses as a measuring stick of humanity, whether or not he can empathize with Merrick at all, is intelligence. Reason, the film concludes, is what makes someone a human being, which might be true, but it also asserts that it is a qualifier for decency. But of course, the potential to reason does not always conclude with actual reason, and the qualification for being treated with decency does not always end up with that result. Merrick is torn between the animal and the man, but it is not entirely his decision. How others treat him reflects who he really is, what he really is. Merrick does not exist in a vacuum. This dual nature is actually very common in a David Lynch movie, a director who believes we have at least two sides to ourselves. But in the famous train station scene, Merrick shouts that he is not an animal and that he is a human being. This is not said triumphantly, it's a plea for the mob to cease their chase, but it's also a realization. Merrick acknowledges his humanity only after understanding both the freedom and loneliness that it brings. Franz Kafka's famous work, The Metamorphosis, is the tale of a man, Gregor, who awakes to find himself transformed into an insect. This loss of humanity is too much for him as he finds that others are burdened by his mere existence. Determined to end his own misery and that of his family, he crawls into his bedroom to die. The Elephant Man is a kind of metamorphosis in reverse, or an inversion of the concept which is not surprising considering Lynch once called Kafka his artistic brother. Merrick at first delights in becoming seen as a human being and not an animal, but experiencing the horrors of human existence becomes a great burden to himself. He lies down to sleep, to die. I am not an animal! I am a human being! Merrick has begun to understand what it means to be part of the human race, he is both part of it, but also alienated from it, and this paradox is too much for him. It's so incongruous that when he is attacked, he reverts back to his earlier personality and life without much of a struggle. In the hospital, he has finally joined human society, but he will always be the subject of ridicule, even malice. Friedrich Nietzsche once infamously said, The aim of malice is not the suffering of others in itself, but our own enjoyment. For instance, as the feeling of revenge or stronger nervous excitement, all teasing even shows the pleasure it gives to exercise our power on others and bring it to an enjoyable feeling of preponderance. Is it immoral to taste pleasure at the expense of another's pain? We give ourselves pleasure in nature by breaking off twigs, loosening stones, fighting with wild animals, and do this in order to become thereby conscious of our strength. To summarize Merrick's findings, humanity is kind and cruel, intelligent and thoughtless, reasonable and savage. If this is what Merrick has found of humankind, does he really want to be part of it? Towards the end of the film, Merrick goes to the theater for the first time. This fits in with something cohesive that runs throughout David Lynch's body of work, his motif of curtains, his fondness for performance and what that can do for the human heart. Afterwards, we see that Merrick is suffering badly from his pulmonary disease. Merrick is consoled by a vision of his mother who recites, Nothing Will Die, a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. In it, the speaker seemingly believes in a world that is in constant motion, and that there is no ending. Another reference to the comforts of art. Merrick witnesses a beautiful play and drifts off in a vision of poetry. He dies as a human being.
Hi everyone, if you like what I do, consider clicking on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also a way for you to request an episode, so check it out.